Hey, this is Vu, and today I'm going to take a look at how to win on T-Side Train. And the first thing you're going to want to do is roll back the recent update that nerfed the Krieg and start using it. And, you know, if you can't do that, there are some other options. The first thing you're going to be looking at is IV control. Now, while this default has kind of fallen out of favor recently, I think the IV control default is the most effective way to win in Pug specifically because it's the most kind of linear way to get control of an area and parlay that into control of a bomb site. And the most obvious way to go for IV control is to either molly early. This is something you'll see a lot of pro teams do nowadays is they'll molly ivy early to prevent that op pushing up personally i don't think that's really necessary unless you're playing at a high level i prefer to come over here if i'm solo wait for pushes if i hear anything or if i just wait a few seconds for them to set up you can toss a flash and peek out with it the flash should blind any oppers holding the angle allow you to clear this out without using your molotov and then you can come over here and try and clear out the angles that the oppers are going to be playing in. And one of the easier ways to do that is toss a flash like that, clear it out, jump across, and then you throw the standard IV utility set. So the deep mullets, or the deep smoke there, plus a molotov. And with that, you've got IV control, and you've pushed the CTs back of just any information on IV. That's what makes this so strong, because it's very awkward to try to re-peak this when terrorists could be, you know, sitting in this corner here. They could be really anywhere along IV with that smoke and Molotov. So if you're playing as a solo player, probably looking at that as a standard play for yourself. But when you're looking at actually winning as a team, a lot of the time you're looking at this smoke here as a pretty solid standard that someone should almost always be throwing. It's called the sandwich smoke, and it allows a lot of pressure to be put down. The CTs love to be playing angles like this on top of the stop sign, trying to post into T spawn, or T con rather. They love to be playing on top of green train, and although green train isn't really smoked off by this, it does allow someone that quickly goes out through Olaf to potentially get to an angle like this and you can certainly from this angle play around with someone on top of green train you can also see uh, Kerrigan has done this many a time where he loops all the way back around comes over here and kills someone towards uh, e-box or even towards the bomb train this smoke gives a ton of playability and even at the end of the day, you can potentially have someone flash through there and a T kind of pushes through and catches this player that might be back bomb or towards stop sign um, holding, which is a very, very common place for the CTs to be playing. And the response to that smoke for CTs needs to be something a little bit aggressive to try and get in towards sandwich here and prevent them or prevent you from getting into a good spot. However, that's not something a lot of pug teams are going to be willing to do. So throwing a sandwich smoke is something you can definitely do every round. And I'm going to be real here. If you're pugging, most of the time, this game relies on the outer hit. The team which can be convinced to five-man outer more effectively and more confidently than the other honestly has a pretty large tendency to win because the outer control or the outer rush, although it's not the end-all be-all when you look at pro games, it is something that you need to be able to hold in order to actually win or you're just going to be run into the ground with it and it's not always that easy to hold you can throw that smoke towards sandwich which causes a lot of problems and makes it a little bit uncomfortable especially for ct sides that have an opera um, that isn't really in position to deal with that you can also throw a molly towards the bottom of green train that pushes players off of this angle down low and you can have an opper post up on the top of the green train pretty easily making it so that the opper on ct side that wants to play you know towards ivy has nowhere to rotate over to and with that you can easily be pushing and swinging wide on the bomb site trying to take down players towards the bomb train towards z you can also be throwing a smoke towards Z as well to begin with, and the flashes that are usually stringing over, which get thrown, that land above and behind the T's, which basically make it uh, nigh on impossible to peek into these players, and it makes it incredibly uncomfortable for the CTs to try to get anything done. They have to actually know what they're doing, use reasonably strong utility, and hit some nice shots to actually deal with an outer rush, as long as you can convince your team to not just kind of sit back and hold this angle here for the first 30 seconds. 
Uh, usually that's what happens. So if you can't convince them to do that, the IV play that I previously mentioned is probably what you're looking at, or you can be looking more towards inner or ladder. And when it comes to ladder, there is the flash that most people know about, the uh, the bounce flash off of the wall to get down into ladder there that uh, Electronics showed. You can Google the Electronic flash if you want. Quick cut to show something I didn't say in the video. There are three ways to flash down ladder that you're probably thinking about. You're thinking about the standard pop flash. You're thinking about this flash down here where you drop in front of it. And you're thinking about this kind of cheese flash where it lands up top. They hear the drop and they turn away. I found the most effective way if you're having one round that you need to go ladder and you're solo queuing is to throw this flash there and drop down with it. People are attuned to listening for the pin sound. They're waiting for you to try and flash down ladder. So if you want to get ladder control, this has been very effective for me. Maybe if you're in really low ranks, people aren't quick enough to turn around. However, my experience says this is the best way. There's also another cool play that Navi does that I haven't really seen anybody else do or even mention, which is when they have a very good spawn, uh, and they're on an ego, they really like running a Zeus fast down ladder. And I've actually seen this be very effective because you get to about here before the CT actually peeks in ladder that's going for a quick ladder play. And this is, I believe this is range to get a kill. I've seen this work quite effectively for Navi a few times. Thought I would just mention a nice little gimmick, but ladder is really an area that is a bit uncomfortable, but a place that you need to be pressuring a decent amount. And if the smoke is down here, you can definitely be boosting over it or walking through it. Ladder is one of the places on this map that is very often forgotten about if nobody is playing in ladder. And when a smoke goes down, people often throw some pretty awful smokes towards ladder as well. Walking out through it is probably one of the most effective walk or smoke walkthroughs on just about any map because of how rare and kind of uncomfortable it is to be looking at ladder as the smoke is up. There are so many angles that you need to be worried about on this CT side, especially if you have three outer two inner which is oftentimes the situation you end up in when your inner player says they threw a smoke and really he has no idea what he's doing so that smoke is often really rarely looked at and can get you some free walkthrough kills but it's just another gimmick that's the thing with train a lot of this is about gimmicks because unless you're running full set executes which you're never going to be doing in pugs then you're not going to be able to get too much done with consistency if your opponents are looking at you they're going to have very advantageous engagements and they're going to win more often than not the other thing you want to be looking at is of course inner and when you look at inner the one thing you want to be making sure you're doing is you want to be trying to isolate the inner player as much as possible. In my opinion on this map, you want to be trying to catch this inner player off who is usually, or very often at least, the weaker of the players on that CT side. Very often they'll put their weakest player in there or just a player that's not very comfortable on a solo bomb site. And inner is a spot that is not the most comfortable to hold. What I have trouble with or what annoys me is when teams just kind of give this up and either never pressure it or maybe only touch it with one player except for when they straight rush it. Going inner quickly is very effective on this map especially when you understand that you want to be getting aggressive in inner. When you get inner control, one thing that does actually tilt me as well is people will get inner control, they'll plant the bomb, and then they'll just kind of stay around here at the back of the bomb site. Although it's very uncomfortable and it's very likely you die when you start pushing down the lanes, you can really just not hold on to B unless you have someone, you know, up here, maybe up towards Z train. These are areas that you need to have players in order to have control and get kills on your opponents. If they know that you're stuck bomb train, you know, ramp train and back haul, they're simply going to retake on you more often than not, even in pugs, even without much coordination. It's not very complicated to smoke upper and smoke lower or to smoke lower and molly upper. Uh, it's just a pretty trivial affair. So you really should be getting a bit more aggressive than I see people get. But again, the problem I have with people in inner is usually they just kind of don't go there except for when they're straight rushing it. 
you should in general have a player defaulting over in that general area, making sure you're putting pressure down, sometimes maybe throwing a smoke out on his own. A flash like this can often be very effective to try and uh, push him off and feign some pressure. And you can even do something as crazy as boosting up and trying to kill the player on Z train, but it seems like there's never a player Z train except for the moment you're not looking and then they absolutely destroy you. But when it comes to train, again, a lot of the time it really is about gimmicks. Make sure that you're putting the pressure of that outer rush down if you can. The Ivy utility set is very strong to put some pressure and you want to be trying to catch them off guard when you can. So thanks for watching and I hope this helped. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button, hit up the Patreon, follow me on Twitter or Twitch and find out when I put up more content. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.